Tomorrow will be a week since a Broward Sheriff's helicopter heading to a call caught fire and fell out of the sky in a catastrophe that killed a fire rescue captain on board and a woman asleep in her apartment below. The demand for answers is immediate and there are no answers yet this morning or until federal investigators complete their painstaking work. But as disasters so often do, this one prompted the kind of public scrutiny that unearths context and brings up questions. In this case, that includes a past report about, and the current workload of, the BSO Air Fleet and those first responders aboard. The Broward County Commission is headed into budget this week, and this will certainly be front and center. Broward Mayor Lamar Fisher will be presiding over that and is right here with us live at the table today for the first time live at the table. Thank so you, happy Glenda. to have you, Mayor. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for interrupting your Labor Day weekend for us. Much appreciated. Yes. Um, so uh, our thoughts and condolences, our hearts are with those families. First I do foremost. want to, to, to um, offer our prayers and thoughts to the Jackson family as well as the Wheaton family as well. Yes as they go through the, um, the burial of their loved ones. And also the prayers for our professional staff, our firefighters and paramedics, along with all law enforcement officers that are going through it, same as well, where they lost a loved one too. 100%, it is a very tough time. And this is a tough conversation to have and a very necessary one. Mm -hmm. And we, we don't, again, we don't have answers and this conversation is not gonna be about answers. But what happened last week really did focus public attention on not only BSO, but maybe all law enforcement, all, uh, all agencies, air fleets, aging, and, um, high maintenance equipment, people who work long hours. What did you and the commission know about that conceptually before Monday, if anything? Well, we had just gone through myself negotiating with the sheriff and both staff uh, of each team was negotiating the final budget for the sheriff or be able to work in his 70 plus positions he wanted and a $64 million increase in his budget. So this really had been conversation only, but last Monday it really hit home uh, to what we really need to look at in the present and in the future as well. How do we replace this aging aircraft, have a long-term plan to do it? And I know that each team is working towards that goal and have been, but this tragedy really stepped in the forefront. It really did, and, and sometimes paper and numbers just don't really put things on, on the priority list like it should. Now we know, and I'm sure you probably knew, but now the public knows that there's this report from 2017 commissioned by BSO, uh, by a consultant, and, it, and it, it really highlights 80 pages. There's a couple of things that really draw your attention. Um, one of them is that three out of four of these, these aircraft mm -hmm. were in operation. One had been in years' worth of maintenance. Uh, aging helicopters that were past their replacement. The parts, according to this report, a lot of confusion about the parts and how old the parts were and where were the parts. And, and now that you have this in hindsight, it's really clear, unclear to the public whether this is still the case. So update us, if you know, mm -hmm. Is this still the case, or has the sheriff's office been able to really, you know, so-called so get its act together when it comes to what the consultant said in 2017? Well, of course, I was not on the dais in 2017. Right, and, and so Gregory I, Tony was not the sheriff then either. Cor cor the correct. Yeah. So we have to look at, at both plans of what we want to do for the future. Um, our budget incorporates for the sheriff to be able to maintain and operate the aircraft. Uh, he has specific Airbus folks who handle the mechanic side of it. And so obviously with some we get the National Transportation Safety Board's report, we actually will not know exactly what it is. The good news is that out of this is that we are able to be contacted by Airbus, by the sheriff, and we're able to hopefully secure one and possibly two aircraft within about a 180 day window. So that's breaking news. And the board will be voting on this on September the 7th to be able to immediately buy the first aircraft with the opportunity to buy the second. So, so theoretically, on Thursday, you will have the purchase of a new helicopter in hand. We will provide the funding for that purchase, yes. The board will make that determination. Oh, great. We love to break news on it, this program. It was, it was good news, and Sheriff <laughs> yeah, Tony uh, was immediately contacted by Airbus. That is his preferred aircraft, yeah. and it's an H-145, which is dual engines, and is completely modified for paramedic and for operations of such. You know, that, that was one of the things in the report that I found really interesting. 
was that Broward Sheriff's is using these helicopters for dual purpose, law enforcement, canvassing areas, chasing subjects, and for paramedic purposes, responding to gunshot victims, car wrecks, helping people. Dual purpose made these helicopters very heavy, heavier than they were supposed to be, logging a lot of hours. I think, um, and I want to talk about the June budget presentation, almost twice the hours logged before maintenance than they were supposed to be. So is one of the, the things that the Sheriff's Department wants to do is sort of bifurcate, get helicopters doing one or the other. Well, they do. They actually have two paramedic type aircraft and then they have three law enforcement aircraft. So those, those are bifurcated They now. are, yeah. The H-145s are the single engines. The H-140, excuse me, 125 is the single. The 145 is the dual and those are the paramedic types. So that was one of the things in the consultant's reports that I guess really came to fruition. That's, that's good news. Yeah. So in June, there was a budget pre presentation coming up to this week mm -hmm. and the sheriff presented um, sort of separate from his presentation for the budget, talked about a project they're working on. He put a $20 million price tag on that to double the number of aircraft, enhance the capabilities. He projected that the number of calls for these aircraft would double in three years. Is there $20 million for this project to take this into the future? Well, immediately on September the 7th, um, the aircraft that we're talking about purchasing is about a $15 million purchase. So immediately we will pay for that uh, if the board approves it. But in the future, again, we want to make sure that long-term plan, Glenda, is in place so we can have this aircraft replaced periodically so they're not aging anymore. And they do have the maintenance capabilities. They do have the warranties in place, whether it be through lease or whether it be through purchase. How is, frame for me, I, you know, you don't speak for other commissioners, certainly, no. and I've spoken to a couple of them this week, mm -hmm. um, and like you, knew all about the sort of headlines of what was going on, but never really realized that it's a now first priority kind of project. Correct. What is the sentiment, do you think, your perspective of the commission as a whole, when you meet Thursday, what do you expect? I expect the commission to really embrace this opportunity that we have. We have had our top priority is public safety, without a doubt. Our sheriff's budget is about 54, 55% of our existing entire budget. So we are committed to public safety. Is that, I don't mean to interrupt you, is that normal? Is that a It depends. A when number? I was at the city of Pompano Beach as mayor, it was about 45%. So, but increasing cost, yeah. obviously we deal with. But at the end of the day, I believe our board is very, very persistent on public safety, and I can't predict how they vote, but I'm sure the majority will be in favor of purchasing this aircraft and then working on the purchase of other aircraft. And then there is the personnel issue, because according to the Sheriff's Department, the people who are, I mean, this is specialized mm -hmm. kind of activity, and people are working long hours especially that, you know, there's the paramedic side, there's the law enforcement side. Mm -hmm. People with those special abilities, they are working the kinds of shifts that are difficult and challenging for, for human physiology. Um, personnel costs have to be part of that. They do, and my understanding that the, the sheriff's budget already has two full-time mechanics that are trained for this aircraft and maintenance of that and I believe he might be looking for more now as he increases his fleet, but we make sure that those dollars are there for him to be able to have those maintenance problems that they can be corrected immediately. And if they're not, down the aircraft until it is completed and then move it forward. You know, this is a, a, such a big issue at the moment, and I know just a, this much part of the entire county budget that you and your colleagues will be working on. Again, I so appreciate your time on this holiday weekend, coming in, sitting here, really being upfront about um, what you're facing. Much appreciated. Thank you, Glenna, very much.